We are live. Welcome to Picks with Pete and Patty. This is the conference championship round. I am Pete. I am joined by a few of my esteemed colleagues today, as you've gotten to know. Uh, this is my man, Patty Pitts, over here. And we're joined by special guest, Soar, who is the editor-in-chief for Stadium Rant. And our mystery guest, who we've talked about all week, is here. His name is Jut. Uh, he is the creative genius behind Besson videos. So if you're watching a Besson video on YouTube, it's likely that Jut put it together. Um, he's the reason we're here together today. Uh, he sent me a message and said we should do an NFL betting preview show. And I think you'd be the guy to rock it. And I was all in. Uh, you know, got my man Patty over here to join me week to week. We've been killing it. Uh, we started off a little bit hotter than we finished last week, but that's okay. Um we got the quad box going today for y'all who uh, are familiar with Red Zone. We got us four up and down on the left side. And then we got the picks over here from DraftKings. Uh, we're just going to be using their lines and their uh, odds for this show. Uh, we got two games coming up over the weekend. But before we get into today's fun, um, how we always start is how we're doing. We got four of us, so I'll do my best to direct some traffic here. Uh, Pat, how we doing? Doing well. It's Friday. One more day of work before my weekend. We got the Royal Rumble coming up as well, as, mm. along with playoff football. It's a great weekend to be a sports fan. It really is. 100%. I love NFL football, and especially for us Pats fans uh, who don't have a, you know, a stake in this game, so to speak. Um, you know, Something to look forward to, something to have some, uh, some interest in. Uh, Soar, how are we feeling? Yeah, um, I think... You know, obviously over the past couple decades, I've been used to being being a participant rather than a rather than a sideline watcher of, of this particular portion of the season. But you know, it's been interesting watching the watching the NFL as kind of a neutral observer and just kinda kinda enjoying enjoying good football without having to worry about stakes. And also, you know, as a Pats fan, I feel like I've been able to kind of look at what a lot of these teams in the playoffs are doing right and kind of trains like that in my head to what should, you know, what, what should we be doing to, you know, this is, this is what we're looking for when you're, when you're talking about where do you want things to go in the Mayo era, three, four five years down the line, look at this, look, look at Sunday's football and there's your answer. Yep. I mean, one of the glaring things to me is quarterback play. There's four good quarterbacks still in play here. So um, that just speaks more to the Patriots needing to go get a quarterback. But um, all of them are surrounded by great weapons. Yeah. And, but, all, but Patriots aside here, uh, we are focused on the Ravens. We got the Chiefs. We got the 49ers and the Lions. But they are all a model of what the Patriots need to do here, uh, hopefully in the years to come. And last, but certainly not least, Jut, how are we feeling today? Jut is rocking the thumbs up. Do we got a double thumbs up, Jut, or are we feeling one thumbs up for today? We got double thumbs up. Hey, 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 let's go. Uh, yes, please drop your, your drop your comments, drop your questions in the chat as we go through this. We'll stop and take them as we go. Um, but if there's no questions or comments, we will start with our Ravens and our four, uh, sorry, our Ravens and our Chiefs matchup, which is at a four point line currently in a 44 and a half point over. Um, like I said, we got a little traffic tonight, so I'll do my best to direct. I'll go last on this one. Uh, Pat, why don't you lead us off? What are your thoughts on the Chiefs and Ravens game? I think this line's good because they are pretty much saying it will be more than a field goal, and it's going to be close. I do like uh, – I, I want to say I like the Chiefs covering just because it's the Chiefs, but that doesn't – that doesn't make you know show how I feel about the outcome of this game. I, I don't see I, I see the Chiefs losing this one, honestly. Um, and if we're going bets wise, I think it's gonna be a close game. So you're gonna the smart bet to do is ride the the plus four. Yeah, I haven't been going back and forth all week with where I stand on this game. I really have been teeter tottering. I'm like, you know, Chiefs in a in a matchup that they've that they're used to. You know, being here is something that they're used to. And Patrick Mahomes is pretty good when he's an underdog. I think he's undefeated as an underdog. So um, in these matchups, I don't know if it, if I have enough confidence uh, to to say the Chiefs actually win this game. Never mind, uh, you know, win. Well, 
they're getting the points. But I still don't think that they're going to win by just a field goal if they were to win. If they win, I think they would win big because they've somehow dominated this game. But I, uh, I'll save my pick because I don't necessarily think that I'm going to go with the Chiefs. Let's go with Soar next. Soar, how do you feel on this game? Yeah, I mean, from a money line perspective, I would definitely say say Baltimore. Um, I think while while Kansas City pulled out the win last week, they definitely didn't didn't look as comfortable on the road as they typically look in their home playoff games. I also just don't think this is the same Chiefs team that we've seen in years past. And the Ravens have been really the only team to me that have kind of been coast to coast dominant this season and they're peaking at the right time. They're executing on both sides of the ball. Um, it's hard to see without essentially perfect play from Mahomes and a lot of luck them winning this game. Um, but I could, you know, as far as the line is concerned, it's been, you know, these games, these games normally don't come down to too many, uh, too many points. Uh, the last, last few AFC championship games have been close. I think, uh, I want to say the Chiefs Bengals game was a three point game. The, uh, I'm sorry, Chief, yeah, yeah. And then the last year's Chiefs, the year before Chiefs Bengals game was close as well. Typically, typically see some, some close football in these games. Um, I'd be I'd be surprised to see the Chiefs win, but I'd also be surprised to see the Ravens blow them out of the water. So it's a, it's an interesting line for sure. Yeah, no, it's interesting that they that they think it's definitely going to be a, a, a more than a field goal, but they weren't willing to go to five or six, which is just still shy of a touchdown. Um, for some reason, they they went with the confident four. Um, I'm going to go over to Jut's notes here. Uh, Jut writes that the Ravens win this game. Um, he, like me, was leaning KC all week, uh, but the Mark Andrews news really pushes him uh, in the directions of the Ravens. He's back. He's off the IR. Uh, Judd saying that with Andrews back in the lineup with likely performing well, it really spreads everything open for Lamar uh, to be able to run them all. Lamar Jackson um, is one of uh, just a little tease his prop. He has a Lamar Jackson rushing prop that he likes because um, he thinks Lamar Jackson is going to be able to run all over this Chiefs this Chiefs defense. Which, to be honest, to transition into where where I think I, I concur, um, the Chiefs defense on the rushing attack is where I think that they're susceptible. Their pass defense is really good. Um, so I've been I like to when I do my betting, I like to make points for both teams and then see which one I think is a stronger point. Um, and that's ultimately who I ride with for like who I pick against the spread. Um, the points for the, or the, the pluses for the chiefs, they're eight, zero and one against the spread when they're underdogs since Mahomes took over. So like I hinted at earlier, they just don't lose when they're dogs and Mahomes is under the center. I'm starting to think, and this is really hard for me to say, I think this might be a, a mature moment for me. Mahomes might have that Brady effect where he just might be a winner, dude. He just might go out and win in these moments. Um, Mahomes is three and one against Lamar Jackson. He has 340 passing yards in those games and all four of those meetings. Uh, he makes his sixth start in a championship game where Jackson is starting in his sixth playoff game. Uh, so you just got a, a whopping amount of, of experience for Mahomes, um, especially when he's a, a backup against the wall. I'm interested to see if Willie Gay plays. If Willie Gay plays, I think that he spies Lamar Jackson all game and really makes it a little bit tough for him. So I want to see – I think he is supposed to play too, so I'm interested to see if that affects uh, the game. Uh, the Chiefs' offense is what we're used to seeing, and this year it just hasn't been there. That's but awesome. last week it – Last week it was there though. Do you think that do you think that they're back, or do you think it's the or one week flash? It's the one week flash of the playoffs. You know, you know the Chiefs are gonna bring all bring it. They're all in the playoffs. You know, with Mahomes, it was the first road playoff game, so he had to get that one under his belt. But I see the the I agree with the Brady effect of Mahomes. He just got something about him where he just knows how to win. Yep. But if we remember, Brady started out, I'm pretty sure, 12 and 0 in his first uh, four playoff or 12 playoff games or whatever it was. Um, and then he lost in Denver when everyone thought that he was the clear guy in 06. I, I see a similarity there with the Chiefs and Baltimore. Baltimore's just a good team, they're just a good mm -hmm. football team. And I don't like the Ravens. I have my I have my issues with them and you know the flake gate and all that, but the, you know the champ can put that aside. 
when when the facts are in front of me. And the facts in front of me that Lamar Jackson's the best football player in the NFL right now. He's it's his time. Yeah, the best and, defense. In the best think, defense. They led in every category, right? Like, you know, we've talked about you know Mahomes' record against Jackson, but this is also a matchup that Mahomes isn't familiar with in the playoffs. Um he's kind of he's had his rounds against Josh Allen, and clearly he he has the edge in that matchup. He's got his you know, he's got his practice against Joe Burrow. But this is a new one in the playoffs, and I haven't seen Lamar Jackson play at this high of a level yet consistently, game in, game out, minute in, minute out. Um, that that whole playoff, um, the playoff demons have gone. He's finally made it to this stage, and he and he did it by playing extremely well in the last game. They The, the Ravens really adjusted nicely after halftime shook off the rust and really played a perfect half of football where the chiefs played a decent game, but they also capitalized on some really bad mistakes on the part of um, Buffalo from the missed field goal to the, to the fake punt attempt. The other thing, you know, Judd Judd brought up injuries. And and another thing I'm going to add to his point is that the chiefs are, the chiefs are also dealing with a few, of their own and not insignificant ones. Uh, Pacheco has uh, finally got back to practicing, but they'll really need him at uh, close to hundred percent because he was a big factor in that Bills game. Uh, Joe Tooney looks like he's going to be out for this game. That could be a big hit he's to the offensive line with, against a, a fairly good Ravens defense. So Mahomes could be under a lot of, of duress. This could be a very, different game just from a health standpoint, and especially with Mark Andrews coming back. It, you could – injuries could definitely play a role in this game. I think they will. Uh, you brought up Thune. Um, He's one of the best passing uh, guards in the entire NFL. In fact, I think PFF ranks him number one. So uh, look for that to affect Patrick Mahomes' stat line. Um, the, we were talking about are the Chiefs back or not. Uh, quickly, Jut, thumbs up. Are the Chiefs' offense back after performing well last week, or do you think it was a one-week fluke? Thumbs up, they're back. Thumbs down, fluke. What do we got? No, he's shaking his head no. There Bones, it is. There, no. yeah. I don't see it. Yeah, no, he doesn't think they're back. Although, oh, here's, the, here's the argument I make for them potentially being back. They scored on five out of seven possessions if you don't count down the kneel downs at the end of the game. Um, they would have scored six out of seven possessions if they didn't fumble it through the back of the end zone, resulting in a touchback. Uh, they scored three touchdowns. You know, maybe that's a fourth touchdown if they don't fumble it. Like I said, if not, it's a field goal. But either way, they're probably scoring at the goal line. Six out of seven possessions where you score is really good against the Bills defense, but we all considered really good. Um, I think that the Ravens defense is better, though. I think the Ravens defense does put up, does shut down uh you know, the, the chiefs attack, you mentioned Pacheco being injured. I think that that plays a role. Who knows how much that hampers him, although he's back and he's good. He's gotten over like 89 rush yards. I think the past three games that he plays. So they hand him the ball and they like to give him, they like to get him involved in the offense. Although I'm not taking the chiefs in this game. I'm taking the Ravens in this game. I think that's the consensus amongst most people picking in this game is that the Ravens are just nasty. Pat Brock, uh, how consistent they are. They just, they just win a ton, and they win against good teams, and they win by a lot. It's just ridiculous how nasty the Baltimore Ravens are, and I think uh, we have to put some respect on the Ravens' name. They lead the NFL in takeaways. They lead the NFL in sacks. Uh, they're number one rush defense. The Chiefs are down their best pass blocker. Uh, the Chiefs' rush defense isn't that good, and the Baltimore rush offense is filthy, uh, led by Lamar Jackson rushing the ball. I think Lamar Jackson is the X factor in this game. Lamar Jackson balls. Ravens cover this line easy. That's just where I stand on it. Um, let's just do a quick summary here, though. I'm taking Ravens plus four. Pat? I'm, I'm going I I'm going Chiefs plus four. Sorry, I said Ravens plus four, but I meant minus four because they are the favorites. You're going Chiefs plus four, Sore? I'm going Ravens minus four. And Jut is taking the Ravens as well. All right, we got three three Ravens minus four and one Chiefs plus four. Honestly, I don't hate any of those picks. I really just think it comes down to Ravens money line at the end of the game. That's uh, but this isn't one. This isn't one I'm touching though. Are you guys? Would you guys actually touch this one, or is it more since I forced you to pick? You're picking. Uh, if you had to pick money line, where do you would you change anything? 
that oh uh, I would change that I wouldn't put the bet in. I would put I would I would be putting money on this if it was Chiefs plus four. It's it's a really hard game to predict from the perspective of yeah, these teams seem to stack up in a certain way, but playoff Mahomes is one of those unpredictable commodities. This Chiefs team varies a lot week to week, and the Ravens haven't gotten to this stage in a long, long time. And so all that combined makes it really difficult to actually be certain about anything. But obviously, Mm -hmm. if I had to pick just based on how the teams stack up, it would be the Ravens, but I probably wouldn't touch this game. Yep, I'm not touching it. Uh, Jut says that Mahomes just leans on Kelsey. Um, If the Ravens defense can limit Kelsey in this game, Pat Mahomes turns a little helpless, uh, which I tend to agree. Without without his safety valve, Kelsey, um, he might be a little bit uh, sporadic, let's say. So let's let's see how um, the Ravens defense chooses to handle that matchup. Let's talk over under. It's at 44 and a half. Are we lean? If you had a pick over under, where would you stand on, on this one? We'll start with uh, you, Pat. I'm going over. There's going to be points on the board, at least 20 to 24 each. And that's all. That's right at 44. You give a little bit of a, a field goal at the end where I think that's where the Chiefs cover. I, I think the over hits. So. You know, for some reason, the AFC Championship has always been these days for the for the Chiefs a lower scoring game than the than whatever divisional playoff game they were in. You know, after that thirty after that slugfest against the Bills, the I think it was twenty four twenty one, right? The the scoreline against the Bengals one year, and then this past year it was twenty three twenty. After again a high scoring divisional game, I feel like. I'm going to I'm going to back that trend to continue. I feel like you're going to see I mean, you're going to see the Ravens defense get more stops than the Bills defense is able to. They've really not been able to get much on the Kansas City team in the playoffs. Um I I feel like both defenses are going to do well enough. Both teams Lamar Jackson, like both quarterbacks are going to be a little nervy. I see I see a couple turnovers. I see better defense. Um, I'm looking something around the something around the 41, 42 range. So you're going under, yeah. and Jut um, just told me he's also he, he agrees with you. He's going under as well. Um, I don't know. I'm going over on this one. Uh, the last week with the 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 Chiefs put up points in their game, and the Ravens put up points in their game. I understand that they're. Got different teams that they're playing against. And I was watching the show and people were like, what happened last week isn't always the greatest indicator of what's going to happen this week. They're playing different teams. You get different matchups. You get different weather. I just think these guys score a lot. And I think there will be scoring in this game. Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm taking the over, but I'm not actually touching it in my, in, in real life. Oh. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm staying away from this over under. Um, but there are props that I do like in this game. Um, and I'll give you, uh, I'm going to start off with Jut. Jut has a prop in this game that we can discuss first, and it revolves around Lamar Jackson and his rushing totals. So give me one minute um, while I pull up the rushing totals. He's at 64 and a half right now, and uh, Jut likes the over on that. Um, he thinks he's going to be rushing the ball in this game. Lamar Jackson would have hit the over if this was the over-under last week in this game. Uh, it just seems like rushing is the offense for the Ravens. Um, Pat, where do you stand on the Lamar Jackson 64 and a half over? Under? I, I like that. I like that over under Lamar's going to have a few just for burst out runs. And they're going to, you, as you said, lean on the run because they, they have to against this chiefs team. They have the chiefs have a good secondary. It'd be better if they, you know, run the ball in the way that not only Lamar is, but Gus is too. You could do some nice read option stuff. You know, they run out of the pistol a lot. It, it just makes sense for Lamar to hit the over here. So what about you? Yeah, um, I'm taking the over as well. Uh, Josh Allen found his found the most success when he was running the ball last week. It seemed to be the aspect of his game that was flourishing more. The Chiefs... Yep. The Chiefs didn't seem like they were really able to stop it. He had a couple of touchdowns. He he himself was over that that uh, sixty four and a half mark, and and I 
it you know Lamar tends to rely on it more, and so I I wouldn't even be surprised if there's an individual run that breaks that mark. But I'm not I wouldn't bet on that. But I think there's gonna I think there's gonna be a lot more reliance on the quarterback run game, the read option, and and I don't think the Chiefs are equipped defensively to stop it the way they are maybe to stop more traditional uh, more traditional offenses. Yeah, I mean, the Chiefs passing defense is their strength, right? So if the pass isn't there, Lamar's going to run. Um, and there's where you get your 64 and a half yards. So I think we're all in consensus there, giving that one the thumbs up. I'll give you one. Um, and then we can kind of just throw them out at random what you, what, if you like anything or you want me to explore any certain category to see, hey, what's the over-under on this? But um, while we're on this page, um, Justice Hill is a guy that I like in this game. Uh, 33 yards. They've been giving him the ball more. I wonder if they have rushing attempts. I think well, be I like one. him. Yeah, Justice Hill rushing attempts. I'd probably going to be pretty low. And I th- rushing yards. There you go, attempts. Oh, oh, slam the over. Slam the oh, over on Justin Justice Hill. Seven and a half rush attempts in this game. Um, Justice Hill, outside of week 18, uh, would have gone over, I think, two of the past three games. Uh, he played 50% of the snaps, three out of the four games, and that's including a week 18 where the Ravens didn't play anyone that they consider starters, and he was one of those people that didn't play. Um, so the Ravens consider him a starter that they wanted to rest for the playoffs. And then first game in the playoffs, they gave him a lot of carries. Um, he played better than Gus did, and I, so I think that they might be transitioning slightly um, who they who they like a little bit better on the Ravens. So I like Justice Hill at the over seven and a half. I think his yards was at 33 or something like that. So uh, they're saying over four, you know, between four and five yards per carry there. Uh, so I don't know. I like him for four, four, and a, four to five yards a carry at seven carries, eight carries, whatever it is to get him over. So um, that's one of the the props that I like. Uh, Pat, you, you got a prop you like, or you got a thought on the Justice Hill? Uh, what's the t- uh, Justice Hill? I, I like that over as well. I'm going to agree there. My interest lies in the touchdowns. I see Gus Edwards scoring a red zone touchdown. Like that's the guy who's going to burst through the hole at the goal line. All right, so first TD 750, last TD 800, but just any time you got plus 130, you're getting plus money on a Gus Edwards touchdown. Um, I agree. I think he's a touchdown scorer. Plus money on Lamar Jackson scoring any time TD is kind of crazy to me. Um, Wait, what? I would absolutely. That's a say. rush touchdown, though. Just just for everyone. Oh, it's a rush. That has to be a rush. I touchdown. don't care. That's still Either it's that. still a rush touchdown. What? Um, I also. I also like the under on Pacheco. Um, I feel like it's more likely than not that the Chiefs are going to start this game on the back foot, just given what we all think about this game. And I think it could get to a point where Mahomes is going to have to rely on the passing game pretty soon, especially with Pacheco not being 100%. I could see his uh, – under on the carries, I could see him getting less than less than 13 and a half carries. Yeah, I mean, if they're passing at the end of the game, um, I read a stat I'll read off to you. When the Chiefs are down, they pass two-thirds of the time. So if the Chiefs are going to be trailing in this game, expect for every three plays, two of them to be pass plays and then one handoff. Uh, so you got if you know uh, if Pacheco is, has any timeshare at all, then, yeah, maybe the under 15-and-a-half carries for Pacheco isn't, isn't a bad prop to throw out there. Although I think he goes over to the 63 rush yards. He's smashed that total the past three weeks. Um, and so even if he falls 20 yards shy of what he's done the past few weeks, he still is over. Um, so I, I don't know if I would go under on him, but uh, one of the things is, uh, you know, the carries there, I definitely agree. Maybe maybe the total rush yards um, just doesn't get yeah. him, or the total rush attempts just doesn't get him there. Especially with the injury, you could see you could see the more experienced Edward, Edwards Alaire getting more carries. Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'll give you another one. Um, I like in this game. I don't, or so at least I'm fading in this game. Rice. Um, he's got 60 yards. I don't know if I want to touch that, but what I would like to t- touch is his receptions. And sorry, this is super zoomed in for me on my screen. I know I've complained about this before, but you don't like that, yeah. Yeah, I don't like the zoom, but it's good for you guys on your end. So we do it. Uh, 
this real over two and a half for oh wait no who did i say i said rice i want to find rice there he is over six and a half um i think he goes under that um in this game yeah i'm i'm, I'm hitting the under on this one here mm-hmm. under six and a half uh six receivers have had over seven catches um against uh the um ravens and that person was cooper cup um i just don't think uh rice is in that category um, the elite pass defense for the Ravens keeps Rice under six and a half catches. That's the other prop that I would like to to share with y'all. Any uh, any thoughts on Rice in this game? I'll let you go first, Sor. You- yeah, under sounds about right. Uh, this this definitely seems like a rely on Travis Kelsey type of game. Um, yeah, that's. I also. You're the- I don't know. Rice has been able to get it done against the against some inferior defenses, but I haven't seen him really rise to the occasion against a team of, of, of this caliber. So um, I, I agree. It's it's going to be interesting to see how how exactly Mahomes splits the ball, but um, I'm interested. yeah. I mean, MBS also. Uh, MBS got got involved a little bit more than usual last yeah. week, and so you you could see a little bit more of that as well. I'm very interested to see who is the leading guy that's not Travis Kelsey for the Chiefs. It's a, it, I'm not going to try to predict it. I'm more just curious on who steps up. I don't know if it's Rasheed Rice. I don't know uh, if it's MBS either. It's a just. To me, it's either Pacheco or Kelsey that's moving the ball, and everyone else is it's just a crapshoot. Yeah, so I had the under on six and a half. Last week he had four catches on four targets, but the week before against Miami, he did have 12 targets, eight catches. That's only one and a half over the six line. Going before that, he had five catches and six catches, nine against New England, seven against Buffalo, eight against Green Bay, eight against the the Raiders, four against the Eagles, two against the Dolphins. You know. We're going back. So he he fluctuates between going over and under six and a half catches. I just think you put him up against this defense and she's not going to get there in this game. Um, and then I'll give you one last one that we can talk about. Uh, passing touchdowns is what I'm looking at in this one. I like Lamar Jackson to throw for a couple touchdowns in this one. Um, I'm wondering what the what the payout would be uh, or what the – yeah, okay, they have over under one and a half, and you're getting plus money. Um, I, I think the Ravens score a lot in this game, and I think that throwing over one and a half for passing touchdowns, he's went over one and a half touchdowns in four of the last five games. Um, people are doubting his ability to pass the ball, um, saying that he just runs the ball. He's not quarterbacky enough. I hate that term. I think he's going to go out there and throw for a couple tutties, maybe run for one. Um, I think this is Lamar Jackson feast. Uh, I think Lamar Jackson goes over one and a half passing touchdowns. Plus 140 is a great payout too, so. Um, you got to like those numbers when you see it. I, w- I would take that. I would take that passing TD one. That'd be the only one that I would take out of the four options there. I, I, it's the safest bet for sure. Yeah, it's very um, hard so to I'm tell t- what, what kind of game Go ahead, sorry. that. It's it's gonna be it's very hard to tell what kind of game we're gonna see from from Patrick Mahomes. I, I could see. I, I could see Pacheco or Edward Dallaire being the one to punch it in more often than not. I, I feel like the Chiefs are going to be extra on guard for the quarterback run game, which opens up the possibility for, for Lamar to get it going on, on, on the passing end of things. Um, he's he's thrown for more than two passing touchdowns more often than not this year. Mm-hmm. And so I, I don't see I, I, this game. This game definitely seems like the occasion for him to do it again. All right, so I have I'm, – I'm putting in – I'm making a little uh, record of what we're picking here. So I got our, our picks against the spread in this game. And if you had to give me, like, you know, your your locket or your 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 go-to prop for this game, I'm, I'm locking in Justice Hill over seven and a half rushes. Jutt's locking in Lamar over 64 and a half rush yards. I know, Sore, you threw out there under Pacheco for rush yards, but if I had a – Ask Pat and Sora, you guys, to lock in a prop. What would be the most confident prop you got going for the people this week? Plus money. It was, I think it was plus 106 I saw. Lamar Jackson, anytime touchdown score. I mean, that's just – he's going to he's gonna run it in at some point. And it's, it's plus money for him just scoring a rush. 105, my bad. <laughs> One off. Get it right. It, 
Yeah, it's dude. It's just he, it's in front of you, dude. Plus money for him to run it in. I I don't yep. know. If Josh Allen like can do it. it against the Chiefs, why can't Lamar do it multiple times? So, if you yeah. had to lock one in, uh, absolutely. I I would I would go um, I would go with the Lamar Jackson rushing yards total at sixty four and a half. Just seems way too low. You're going over on that. You're you're riding with Jut. Right, riding with Jut. I love it. All right. Unless we have any final thoughts on our Ravens Chiefs game, we can move into the next. Any final thoughts before I uh, take off? They got a halftime. They got a. They have a halftime over under on this one. I'm just curious. Oh, do they? They have everything. They, they won't let you down with do they have it. It's just do they have it yet? Let's see. Uh, this has this has the um, air of a slower starting game that. This has a this has the era of we'll see more point we'll see more of the points in the second half type of game. I feel like both these teams are going to settle into this match a little bit. Okay. So Vegas okay. Vegas has it exactly even twenty two and a half. So if you think that the first half is going to be slower, are you taking yeah. the under on the first half and the over on the second, or do you think that number is wrong? Uh, I would I would do exactly that. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a I think it's going to be a pretty low scoring. First half, and I think both offenses are going to are going to open up in the second. Oh, it's doing the thing where I didn't do the same game parlay, Pat. Oh, you hate to yeah, see it. Yeah, we don't it. we we don't like that. We don't like that. I wanted to see if you could do that. I, this I, is I this is making me missing living in a state where sports betting is legal. Georgia's got to get their act together. Oh wait, you said the first half would be slow. So under on the yeah. first, over on the second. Plus two fifty eight. That bad. ain't bad. Yeah, That's like not that. bad at all. That's a good payout, people. If you think the first half is going to be slow and the second half causes an uptick, go hit the under on the first and the over on the second half and get yourself a nice little payday. Uh, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, Jut tells me Travis Kelsey. Uh, Let's see. He wants to take a look at the uh, on the on the passing yards there. What, uh, what, what, what do we have? Do you remember? Let's see. There we go. Sixty-two and a half. Oh, oh my. that might be low. That might be low. Yeah, yeah. There Judd, it is. Yes. Up thumbs up. Yeah. He, jack that up. Judd says hammer the over. Uh, Travis Kelsey forty-two and a half. Uh, or sorry, sixty-two and a half passing yard or reception yards. Um, I like that too. He's a beast. He's their go-to. He's the safety valve. Um, yeah, I think Kelsey gets over sixty-two and a half yards. I, I don't. I haven't looked it up, but I'm assuming he just goes over that pretty regularly. Um, and sixty-two seems very low. I wanna. I wanna pull up his his receiving uh, totals the past couple of games. Let's see. He's gone over that ten times this season. Yeah. What? He went over the past two weeks in the playoffs too. Seventy-five, seventy-one. Right. Uh, the past two weeks in the playoffs, which are the, I think, a little bit better examples to, to look at for what he's going to do in the next playoff game. You know, what he does against the Bengals in week 18 might not give you the best indicator, but what he did against Buffalo and Miami the past two weeks might. And yeah, uh, six targets and 10 targets, 75 and 71. He got two touchdowns last week, as we know. Yeah, I, I agree with Jut. Great pick, Jut. All right. Let's, let's, game. let's, let's, let's go let's into the next game. Yeah, let's this do it. is. This is every week that we have the Lions. Pat introduces the game. Pat, go ahead. Oh, we got my Motor City Kitties traveling to the Bay State to take on the San Francisco 49ers. First Lions Conference Championship in, I think, millenniums. I mean, it's been a minute since the Lions have been here. And I'm not going to lie. It's kind of disrespectful to have them at seven and a half. I'm just saying. It's, I think it's Wild. a little disrespectful at seven and a half. I'm not going to come out and say it's disrespectful to have them as the underdogs. No, no, no. no. We're, we're an unbiased Lions fan here. I think this line is just a little too high. It's going to be a close game. If you look at the Lions past uh, or when they played the Cowboys, I think it was. No, Rams. Excuse me, Rams. Uh, that was a really close game. Uh, last week was really – neck. Or, yeah, last week was really – close as well they play teams close they they're just a team that does not get blown out they may not have the best defense 
but they're dogs. They're going to fight and play full 60. It's just disrespectful to have them at seven and a half point underdogs. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you there. Um, it's the, the, the 49ers didn't exactly dominate Green Bay either. And I think this is a better team that they're facing. It's definitely a better team that they're facing. And, uh, mm. you know, it'll, we'll, we'll have to see if, um, Detroit gets overwhelmed by the occasion, but unless that happens, yeah, I, I don't see any scenario in which the Lions get blown out in this game. Yeah, it feels like that's what they're calling for as a blow. And it started at seven and then moved to seven and a half. Like, I think uh, I read a stat and, you know, these change as time goes. And so whenever I read it, things will change. But 44% of the people that are betting on the Lions are betting money line. So the line, people think the Lions are going to win the game. Never mind the seven and a half points that they could be handed if you want to take the seven and a half points just to start out. There's a lot of faith in the Lions. Um, I'll just start off. I'm putting it on record. Seven and a half? Give me the Lions. Give me the points. Give me the Lions. I like this. I like the Lions in this game. Although I, I the 49ers could win. Um, I don't know if they'll let you take the seven and a half and the 49ers money line, but that would be an interesting, like, that if you wanted to put small money on it, uh, you know, you could say, yeah, the 49ers are going to win, but they're not going to win by that much. Um, so that would be an interesting one. Uh, the Lions go back the past 29 games. They're 22 and seven. Uh, they just have three in those in that span. They have three losses by seven points or more. So in the seven losses that they've had the past 29 games, only three of them they've lost by more than seven points. So maybe the 49ers are just completely different than those other 29 teams, and that's very likely too. So it is it is an interesting stat, though, that the Lions just they really don't get you know beat by a touchdown or more often when they lose these games. So the seven and a half in a playoff game just seems like too many points. Wait, too many points. Let's see how Especially Jeff feels here. Je- yeah. Right, go ahead. No, yeah, no, no. Go, 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 no. Yeah. go ahead. Oh, uh, all right. I just think Here's, this, yeah. No, you go. Never mind. Go, go. We could do this. You go. No, I go. <laughs> we no, can do it. I like it. No, 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 no you hang up. No, no, you hang up. <laughs> What's got Jut? What's Jut got for us? He thinks the magical run is coming to an end. Um, but he makes it. the disclaimer. He makes the disclaimer that he doesn't want it to. It's not. It's not he's a man that understands objectivity. Fair. Jut. Doesn't want the Lions to lose, but he sees what's going to happen, and he thinks the 49ers take this one. They're at home. That he says they're five and zero since twenty twenty at home. Twenty eight and ten since nineteen fifty seven. Jut nineteen fifty seven, my dude. <laughs> I love these stats, uh, but nonetheless, home field is a huge advantage. You can't take that away from anyone. Uh, but he says, "Give me CMC and a home field advantage." Uh, Anytime. Um, and I think he also is saying CMC anytime touchdown too. So when we get to yeah. the props, I mean, that's as good of a lock as any uh, prop is CMC touchdown, um, which I 100% agree with CMC getting a touchdown. Um, he's taken the, the, the Niners at seven and a half, which means he does think this is going to be a big win for the 49ers. Uh, I, I don't know if they win by that much, though. I just don't know if I have that much confidence in a eight plus point victory, which is, what you know, even if they just win by a touchdown, they're not covering, which, you know, maybe you slide it to six and a half and feel more confident. But um, I just don't feel confident with the amount of, with the actual spread that they have on this line. The Niners are also only one and three in their last four times of asking at this stage. Um, it, it's not been, not been the kindest. The conference championship game has not been the kindest to them lately. Uh, one and three in the last four, two and four in the last six. Um, and they've only and of those six, they only one of the only one of their two wins was by a large margin that that Packers game. Um, I think, mm. I think this is going to be a, um, I think this is going to be a close game, no matter who wins. Agreed. I mean, one of the things that I was reading, because uh, I mean, I'm a big believer uh, that Goff can go out there and perform. He's been, you know, he's been here before. He understands it, whereas Purdy, Purdy, this is a little bit new to him, and I think his inexperience will catch up to him eventually, and this might be the week where his inexperience does. Um, I, like I said, I like to make points for both teams and see which one's stronger. Obviously, I already gave you my pick. I think the Lions plus 7.5 is the right way to go. Uh, but Jared Goff likes to throw down the middle of the field. That's his 
thing. On the 49ers rank first, and there's a stat called DVOA. It's defensive, defense adjusted value over average, uh, which might be a little bit too nerdy, but it basically breaks down how well people are performing based on a league average. And they're first. The 49ers are for, first at shutting down passes over the middle. Goff likes to pass it over the middle. So I'm not too sure if the passing offense um, performs like all the other passing performances, uh, you know, or what we're used to. Uh, but I'm still taking the Lions in this one, even with Debo being announced in for this game, which I think is a huge factor. Debo is one of the top targets for Purdy. Uh, do you think Debo sways this game any one direction or um, in out wouldn't have mattered? I sort of take this one. I think, I'm, I'm I think he sways it in terms of the money line. I don't think he sways it in terms okay. of the spread. I do like this money line. If I, if you know, I do like this money line betting on the Lions, not not because I think it'll happen, but because I think that it's. I would I would give the Lions maybe a, a thirty five percent chance ish of winning this game, and if I'm going to do that, a plus two seventy money line is is quite kind, for a conference championship game. I don't I don't know, I don't know when's the last time a conference championship game has had this kind of money line and this kind of spread, I uh, have not, uh, I, I'll have to go digging for that, but I cannot imagine that it's an overly, overly likely uh, figure. And I don't know. I don't see this being like an exceptional conference championship in terms of, of, of the gap between the two teams or anything where, where you can say, Oh, this, this matchup justifies that, that crazy line. I'm putting I'm I'm putting my money on the money line as the Lions fan. But I just it's that's really all I would be doing with this these three or this, you know, spread total money line. Is I'm just taking the, you know, money line there. Yeah, ESPN um bet has already dropped or their line is seven. Um I'm surprised that DraftKings didn't drop it back down to seven too. I think Debo Samuel makes the the line should adjust the line back down to seven. Um, I, I think seven and a half is kind of that half a point is big um, in this situation, especially with Debo Samuel being back in the game. But you also have to consider the injuries for the Lions. You got uh, their center Rag now and tight end Laporta back in the, both playing in this game, which I think are factors too. They will be down in O lineman, so you consider that. Uh, injuries are playing factors all over it, but I think coaching might play a factor in this one too. Dan Campbell is super aggressive. He might go for it on fourth a few times, might go for two a few times, whereas Shanahan on the other side of the ball, super conservative. Uh, so you have a super aggressive coach who plays more of a rah-rah motivational role for his team versus Shanahan, who is a very conservative, more of a mastermind game planner and less of a rah-rah coach. Uh, when it comes to this, you saw him go for the field goal at the end of the first half last week, as opposed to trying to score the touchdown. Um, so it really just comes down to it. Will the 49ers execute their game plan? I think they'll win if they execute their game plan. But that's where the Brock Purdy comes in. I mentioned his inexperience here. Will he be able to execute Shanahan's game plan exactly as Shanahan laid it out thus far? That's why they're here. Uh, he has been. Uh, but we will see this weekend um, if he if he does that again moving forward. Um, let's see what we got for Judd's notes here. Oh, yeah, Judd, he's predicting a Super Bowl 43 matchup, uh, in the in this one here with his 49ers, uh, picking the win. Okay. Um, let's get Hopefully into some props. You can keep the power going, and... yeah, that was <laughs> oh my God, I didn't know TV what happened TV. in the moment when that happened. That was crazy. Although, it did probably, it was probably a big reason why that was a game. Oh yeah, true it was. That got it right back into it. That was like made it close again. Mm. Well, hopefully the lights stay on this week. CMC at the minus three sixty. That payout is trash, but I mean he's gonna do it, right? That's a massive number. I didn't think it was that high. Okay, maybe maybe I maybe I don't take it because you you're just not getting anything for it. You know what I mean? It's just not yeah. worth your your dollar. It's all risk. They love that number on the Jameer Gibbs first TD scorer. I know I don't think it's likely, 
But it's a good number for a player who's been kind of on fire lately. Even and more, you think David the Montgomery, offense. who's been the TD. Yeah. Dude, they drive down the field. Lions get the ball first. Dragoff's not going to air it out for the first touchdown. They're going to methodically go down the field to keep that offense off it. And then you have the drive end with Dave Montgomery busting it through, you know, or booking it to the outside, finding the end zone. I that that I put weird. money on both those both those uh, numbers, and one I think one of the two would score. Yeah, I mean, Jameer Gibbs is getting hated on in the pass game, too, if you think that the, they're going to be passing a lot, dumping it off to Gibbs, not Montgomery. O- over 23 and a half passing yards is his – or, sorry, re- receiving yards is his line. And then, you know, maybe even pair it with his uh, his rushing numbers. What are they doing for Gibbs? 49 rush yards and 23 pass yards. Does he go for, like, 75 total yards in this game, or do you think that's too risky? Yeah, I think it's it risky. It's a risky. Number. Yeah. Like, uh, especially in the case of Gibbs, who's been been heating up lately. Um, and and you know they one of the main reasons they drafted him is is his efficacy in the um, in the passing game. They last four. I'm sorry, last in the last two playoff games, he's caught all four of his targets for around forty yards. I think that's a safe ish figure for him to hit again. Uh, I'd agree with that. No, it isn't bad either. Plus 248 to, to have Jameer Gibbs have a game. That's not, not bad. Terrible. At all. That's not bad. Yeah, I kind of like the receiving yards. You know what I mean? Lions down late. Dumping the ball off to Gibbs, getting him over the getting him over the twenty three yard mark. I don't know, two catches, yeah. two good catches, what, maybe three good catches that he gets over Gibbs the twenty three yard mark for, uh, for for as a rusher because well he could get a reception too. Either way, yeah. any time TD, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's yeah, rushing or receiving. Yeah, I think it's just you can't. It's just not passing it because you know. Got it. You're almost inevitably going to pass the ball. Inevitably. For the so, six yeah, out of the Jameer, last seven games, he scored a touchdown for the Lions, including the last two playoff games. Six out of the last seven past two playoff games, that's good enough stats to back up a bet, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Plus money, you know? I don't know. I, li- I like that. Uh, you want me to lock that one in for you? I think that's a great one, uh, Jameer I Gibbs. I think that's my lock. That's got to be it, right? Gibbs, touchdown. Yeah, like great that. payout too. Yeah. Um, one of the things I really like in this game uh, is uh, George Kittle. He's getting plus money for a touchdown. I don't mind that. Um, but I think he's getting hated on if I remember looking at it and the receiving. And yeah, I think he goes over 60 yards. I'll, you know, I might even take that all the way if the line keeps moving. It started off at 57. Like when I wrote my notes, it was at 57 and a half. And I was like, oh, yeah, take over 57. Still confident at 60. I wrote I would take it all the way up to 64 because I was trending up in that direction. Um, mm-hmm. I think the Lions' pass defense is just so bad. They let up so many pass yards. And George Kittle's a really good tight end, and Purdy will look for a safety valve, and I think um, he dumps it off to Kittle. You might even be able to take Kittle over and then pair it with a with a touchdown. Um, let's see what, what that sort of payout looks like. Yeah, the, the Lions' secondary is – good but they let up a lot of plays over the middle of the field that's where the tight ends eat the most i see kittle having upwards of like close to 100 receiving yards i mean kate otten who i didn't know who he was to be perfectly honest (laughs) had 65 yards and a touchdown last week against yeah that's what i'm uh, saying against that lions defense like tells me all right yeah i'm I'm locking in Kittle over 60 yards or 60 and a half yards. That's going to be my prop for this one. Um, I think that they rely, or, you know, the the Lions pass defense is just too bad and the 49ers are going to use him. So I'm going Kittle over 60 and a half. Pat, let's find one for you. Yeah, let's get me one. one Lock one. Where do you you want me? Where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to go? Mm. Give me, give me some uh, quarterback passing. Give me some quarterback passing. All right, let's go pass some props. 
Brock Purdy. Like no. Purdy over 279 with the amount of I passing like under. the Lions allow? Ooh. Uh, I like under the for Lions Purdy. Even stepped up. Okay. Um, I still think he has like 260, 250, but that's a very high number. I think Goff goes over. Goff, it's going to be a big day for Goff throwing, not only just in general, but to Sam Laporta. This is going to be a tight, tight end heavy game. You have Kittle, you have Laporta, two of the best tight ends in the league right now. They, they're going to account for a lot of yards. And I, I'm, Goff is going to go off in this game, uh, and they're going to they're going to hone in on Amon Ra, s- leave Sam Laporta wide open, uh, and then also Josh Reynolds was on the injury report. Khalif Raymond's out, so those are two guys. Jamison Williams obviously plays a factor too, but I see Laporta being the uh, the A target. Let's see what they're giving him. Yeah, I mean, forty-seven uh, and a half. Oh, dude, yeah. That's- Jets, Jets giving us the over here, uh, hey. over 47 and a half for Laporta. The only thing that I would say to, to, to you and Jet is he's just fresh off the injury report and how much of a decoy versus how much are they actually going to throw the, him the ball a lot and risk re-injury with a potential Super Bowl bid. But, you know, two weeks off in between. Yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know if I'm as confident as you two in the Sam Laporta over 47 and a half. What do we got Jameson Williams receiving yards? What do we got there? Also, about the while we're looking that up, about the quarterbacks, last four games, Jared Goff has been over over that figure, and last four games, Brock Purdy has been under his figure. So, oh, well, like but the those, Lions' uh, defense, I, like I think, defense. has to be a factor here. How bad For it sure. is, right? For sure. But you know, John, John, get back. Back. But you could, you know, there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of CMC in this game too. I feel like oh, yeah, there is there is going to be a lot of CMC. Well, hold on. Where where you gave us um, you gave us under on Purdy, over mm-hmm. on Goff, and then mm-hmm. we also have what was the you gave us a third one too the where was it oh the Amon Ross St. Brown you were saying you like Amon Ross St. Brown Do you like his over eighty four and a half or is that too high? Uh, I think that's a little high. I would I'm I'm seeing him and Laporta being very close in everything. All right, so if we had, if you had to take one of those four, Laporta, um, Laporta, Amon Ross, St. Brown, and then we got Purdy and Goff. Those four props there. If you had to pick one as your favorite of those four, are you leaning any particular direction? Uh, Goff Pat? over. Goff over. Goff over. Yes. All right. Just I'm just try. writing that down. And uh, the pick that Jut has. Is a CMC anytime touchdown score, which we all I think are in a consensus that CMC just you could have almost lock it in. Um, one thing I would throw out there is we talked about the minus three sixty line. I think if you're going Christian McCaffrey, that for anytime touchdown score, you got to parlay it with something else just to get yourself a decent payout. But he's a great person to add to uh, you know a touchdown score. So if you thought like. Debo Samuel is going to score, maybe Debo and Christian McCaffrey. If you thought Gibbs was going to score, maybe Gibbs and Christian McCaffrey. And, and you can start building some parlays because uh, he'll just help you out. What's the Gibbs plus McCaffrey uh, payout? Ooh. Hmm. That's a you get pl- you're starting to get plus money, you know, plus money. It's a good enough boost for a sure thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you had 120 with Gibbs alone, but you can move it up to 156 if you throw in CMC. I like that. I don't think that's a bad ad at all. Maybe you just combine Jut's pick with Source pick. You go Gibbs TD and CMC TD, and you make a little parlay action out of it. Um, I don't hate that at all. I don't either. It's oh, nice guy. I think that could be nice. Yeah. <laughs> Stats. Stats. Um, I'll give you one. I'll give you one. I, I don't. Let's see. Russian props. I know we're high on Christian McCaffrey. 85 yards is where he's at for rush yards. Um, but, right? Oh, where is he? Where is his rushing attempts? Do they not have a rushing? Do we not have rushing attempts? Huh. I saw a line where they had it at 19 and a half rushing attempts for Christian McCaffrey. 
um, which I thought was a little bit too high for this game. Um, I don't know what his stats are, 100% like what, how many rush yards he gets uh, or how many rushes he gets per game. Um, but what I did learn was that he nine straight weeks, um, he has gotten under 20 carries. So I don't know if that's just the end of the season, not trying to get CMC hurt as you enter into the playoffs under 20 yards to carry the last nine weeks, or if that's just how much they use CMC. They like to pass with them. They like to do different things. They don't just have one running back. So um, it doesn't seem like DraftKings has the rushing attempts line. At least maybe I'm just silly and can't find it, but I am under rushing props. But if you can find a line on CMC and it is that high, it is up by 20, I would hit the under on that just because he hasn't gotten to 20. Um, it doesn't seem like DraftKings has it has it here, but I think ESPN bet ESPN bet had it when I was looking earlier, so that's possible one too. But just in review, uh, as far as our picks against the spread, I am going plus seven and a half Lions. Pat, you are also going plus seven and a half Lions. Do I remember that correctly? Yeah, for the for the peeps, I'm going plus seven and a half. Uh, yeah, for the, for the and peeps. So are we. What are we? What are we, what do we like as far as the line? I'm going with the I'm going with the Jameer Gibbs plus uh, plus McCaffrey combo. Oh, I, li- I like that combo. I, I um I meant line. Uh, I forgot what you had picked for your for your bet against the seven and a half point spread. Oh 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 um definitely Lions. Lions plus seven and a half. All right, and then we have our man Jut. He's putting in minus seven and a half for the 49ers. Um, I like it. Uh. I like our. I think anything could happen um, in these games. Um, I felt a lot more confident weeks past picking against the spread. I was like, "Oh, lock this one, lock in the Packers that week." We I locked in the like, the Eagles losing. We picked the Bucks to over, you know, upset them. Uh, we, you know, teams that we called frauds ended up being fraudulent. We said Miami was fraudulent. They were fraudulent. Um, so far against the spread, uh, I'm eight and two. But I don't necessarily like have as much confidence going into this week picking against the spread. If you were to be in my uh, in my 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 app looking at the bets that I picked, they're all prop related. They're all mm-hmm. teasing related. Although um, bookies love when you tease it, um, teasing gets them lots of money. It's just kind of a, a way to set yourself up to fail, and the odds are ter- end up being terrible. But take a look at some of these props. Take a look at some of the trends. I think that's a good way to bet. Uh, looking at what things are trending in which direction, like, for example, the line opened up at three, then went to three and a half and moved to four uh, for the KC Ravens game. This game opened up at seven and moved to seven and a half. So it's interesting to see where the money is coming in on both of these games and the trends on both of these games. Like if you took Ravens at minus three, you're lo- you're loving it now, right? Uh, you're playing with house money in a way because now it's at four. Uh, so, you know, you, you would love, love to pick the Ravens at minus three a week ago or whenever the line came out. Um, but in review of our props, I'm going Kittle over 60 and a half. Pat's going Goff over on the passing yards. Uh, Soar's locking in Gibbs touchdown and likes pairing it with the CMC touchdown. And my man Jut uh, likes the CMC anytime touchdown scorer. Um, we're in for some action on Sunday. Uh, any final thoughts before we wrap up here? Well, Pat, we'll start with you. Get, why don't you give us your final thoughts and tell the people where they can find you um, online. My final thoughts. Thank you once again for allowing me to hop in here. I love doing this now, especially anytime I get to talk about my Motor City Kitty Detroit Lions in the playoffs. Oh. It's just awesome. Um, also wanted to shout out, I I had to wear this today because it is the Lions, but I am repping, uh, let's not show my tummy on air, but uh, <laughs> I am repping the, the shirt. Oh, I love captain. it. Yeah, the Patriots captain shirt. I am wearing the Patriots captain shirt. So comfy. So comfy. Looks good on me. So uh, I repped that yesterday on the Gillette Gazette where you can find Sore and I's podcast or sh- show at this point um, over at Stadium Rant on YouTube, Gillette Gazette. Uh, and then follow me on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, at Pat underscore Pitts and at Pitsy35 on Instagram and threads. Awesome. Yeah, no, I'm glad it's comfy. Uh, so give us your final yeah. thoughts. Let the people know where to find you. Yeah, uh, it was a, you know, really, really fun to be on here uh, and talk, talk some bets with you guys. Uh, I'm excited. This, this, this weekend's going to be, it's one of the more unpredictable conference championship weekends I've, I've seen in some time. 
And uh, yeah, uh, to find me, uh, obviously, uh, you know, check out stadiumrant.com for articles by, you know, both written and edited by, by myself and our, and our awesome team. Um, check out my Twitter at, um, at Suravora, as well as Stadium Rant's Twitter at Stadium Rant HQ. And check out, uh, uh, check out Stadium Rant's YouTube channel as well. Well, I appreciate both you guys hopping on. Um, and for Jut, you can find Jut on Twitter um, at Jut underscore stock. Um, recently Jut went down and I don't know if you guys saw it, but you should follow him on TikTok too, because this man dapped up big poppy. Um, he, he, he touched big poppy's hand. Uh, Dude, he's got, he, he put up, yeah, no, I'm super jealous of Jut right now. Um, I can't go on for it for too long without getting super jealous. Um, but yeah, no, go check out Jut on social media. Go check out his video where he gives pa Pappy the dap. Um, he meets a bunch of other players and people down there too. So it's, it's, it's worth checking out if you're a Sox fan or just a fan of Jut in general. Um, I am. I know that. Uh, so definitely go check out Jut um, on Twitter or X or, what, like you said, whatever the heck we're calling it these days. Um, you can find me at P underscore Collins underscore. I am the host of the Foxboro Fellas podcast. I might need to call it just the Foxboro Fella podcast at this point because I'm the fella there. Um, we do have an open co-host seat. So all those who are listening who love Patriots, uh come come talk to me come let, let's talk patriots we chop it up each week i got the next episode going live monday night uh, we got a very special guest which i'll put out there um, maybe tomorrow i'll put out a preview post of who we're pulling in um but i think you guys are all going to be excited i'll say that uh so check that out on a weekly basis next week no show uh pat because no playoff game uh next, we're not doing a probe i refuse to do a skills competition preview um, so no, you, 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 you we got PT. We got PT. I refuse to bet on it. Uh, we, we have PTO next week. Um, we, we got the week off. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, we don't I'm even have the militia week. next week. There's no uh, militia. What are we gonna do next week? <laughs> well, next week it's. I think we're up in the air right now at the Nonsense Sports Network. Who's gonna get that that time slot? We got the Celtics, that fun team. Where the nonsense twist of that is he beat the Heat by thirty three. The actual Last Celtics won, beat, won by 33. These Celtics, we only have three keepers, and it's Tatum, Brown, and Tingus, Pingus. Everyone else, Ooh. it's – I mean, I kind of went to town on that draft. And then Bruins, uh, I got actually friends of mine that played in college and whatnot in the game, so I put them on the team, and uh, we're that. doing that. So, I, I, you know, it's one of those two teams. We may get something else. I don't know. It's still up in the air, but there will be a stream next week. Uh, five thirty and Nonsense Sports Network. Just don't know what. Yeah, if you're not familiar, if you're not familiar, the Nonsense Sports Network. Uh, Pat will be streaming. Um, and when he's talking these teams, he's talking video games like 2K, Chell, Madden. Um, but you can check those out if you're bored and you don't want to watch flag football. I think I would much rather be watching the militia or whoever's playing. Really, um, go check them out. I also have been streaming lately too. Uh, so like you can it. check out. I'll probably play a Madden game or two, but we won't compete. We'll play playing at different times. No. So you can catch us all. Um, it's all one network, yeah, yeah. one love. One network, one yeah, love. Yeah, it's all one love, baby. Um, yeah, so check us out. We'll be uh, we'll be doing a Super Bowl preview, and um, I got some. We'll be bringing in some other guests. Uh, so definitely check us out for that in a couple of weeks. Um, but that's it for me tonight. Soar, Pat, Jut. It's been real, and good night. Thank you very much for uh, for joining us. I'm going to hit end stream now, and it's going to take three seconds while I do that. 